What happened to you when you were young that you didn't understand until years later, potentially not safe for work? I was in LA at the age of 10 and ended up with sunburn as I am English and not used to the heat. My dad took me to the restroom where we shared a stall and he helped me take my t-shirt off so that he could reapply after sun. This was pretty painful. I was screaming inside a locked stall, saying that it hurt, so was surprised when a burly guy forced open the door, looking quite annoyed at my dad, who explained correctly what was happening. I grimaced through the pain and agreed as best as possible. Only years later that I realized that burly guy was a top bloke, and that the pain he was trying to save me from wasn't that kind of chafing. TLDR, a nice, bear-like man, made sure I wasn't being inappropriately touched by my own father. I found a butt inside my dad's closet when I was six. A butt. Looking back on it now, it was probably an adult toy, just something he made to look like a women's butt. Either way, I pulled it out of his closet and was sitting next to it on the couch when he got home from work. I was a lonely kid. Edit, I'm a girl. When me and my sister were around the ages of eight and six, we gave our mom a necklace for her birthday. She was about 36 years old at that time. It was a blue slash green twinkling necklace, and we thought it was perfect for mom because she loves glitter and jewelry. She wore it at every occasion she had guests for dinner and similar. We were very proud of our gift because she liked it so much that she wore it all the time. Years later, I realized that it was an ugly piece of crap. Really, no sane human would wear this dog collar in disguise. I cringed at the thought of actually having given it to mom. Then it clicked. She wore it for us so that we don't feel guilty of giving crappy things to her while making a fool out of herself in front of everybody else. I love you, mom. When I was about 14, a guy who I went to school with had leukemia. He disappeared from school for a while while he had chemo, and then came back when he recovered a little. We weren't particularly close. In fact, there'd been a little bit of animosity between us, for no particular reason, just petty kid stuff. But last day of term, as I was walking towards the school gate, he caught up with me and walked with me. He told me he was sorry there had been tension between us and that he liked me and hoped we could be friends. He died during the summer break and I realized sometime later that maybe he had known he wasn't going to make it and that he was trying to make his peace with the world before he went. When I was a little kid, we had a kid in our class named George who was mentally disabled. We had special needs kids in our school and we wouldn't have them in the same class, but they would share recess with the rest of us. George dressed funny, he couldn't speak very well, and he had a hard time understanding what we were telling him. As you might imagine, this led to a lot of the kids excluding him or making fun of him. My friends and I decided to be his friend. He was a nice kid, didn't mean any harm. He was just a bit slow. Years later, in telling the story to someone else, I remembered my teacher explaining that he was quote-unquote Greek, which I didn't understand at the time. Thinking about it, I remember that just like the special needs kids, the ESL kids shared recess with us. George wasn't disabled. He was just a recent immigrant from Greece who didn't speak English very well. Visiting my aunt and her cool roommate Susan when I was a child. Didn't realize until my cousin said something when I was in high school. You mean her roommate? Oh, holy crap. My mom told me that my goldfish ran away. You are now imagining a fish with legs. You're welcome. We had a science fair in 6th grade, and I was doing some sleep experiment or something. Being the know-it-all I was, I referred to my subjects as testees, like trainees, I thought. My teacher politely suggested calling them test takers instead. Years later, it dawned upon me, and I have mad respect for him not laughing in my face. I would've. When I was 12, my divorced mother and I lived in a nice duplex in my hometown. She would go to the city after I fell asleep and party downtown with my aunt almost every night. I didn't know this until I was older. One night in particular, I fell asleep on the couch and halfway woke up to the sound of the front door opening and closing. I saw my mom walk in with a creepy, hooded, shadowy figure close behind her. I fell back asleep. The next morning, I asked my mom who was with her when she came home last night. She looked terribly confused. I told her about the figure behind her, and the color drained out of her face, and she shook her head and told me to stop playing games. That if I kept telling ghost stories, I would invite malevolent spirits into the house. Found out like a year ago that she brought a guy home and made me believe it was a ghost so I wouldn't tell my grandparents. Crafty woman. 
TLDR, my mother brought a guy home one night and let me believe for over 10 years that I had seen a ghost. Sometimes we would stop at my aunt's work so that my dad could go in and talk to her. I wasn't allowed in because I was a kid and it was an adult place. The only other things that ever got the descriptor adult were adult films, which were not for kids because of all the screwing. So I happily assumed that my aunt worked someplace where all sorts of screwing was happening. Years later, I was driving by and noticed that it was a retirement home. When I was about four or five, we got two very important life-changing bits of medical news. The first was that my baby brother was on the way. The second was that my father was diagnosed with acute lymphoma and had about two weeks to live. When I was little, I had no grasp of how serious cancer was. My mom told me my dad was sick, but that was it. I remember my mom kept insisting that I spent time with him, but I would always get angry when he got too tired to play or kicked me out so he could vomit from the chemo. I remember one night in particular where my school had my first back-to-school night slash carnival. They had all sorts of rides and stuff. My dad had just had extensive surgery and had staples across his entire neck. I used to joke that he was like Frankenstein. My dad managed to make it through the big presentation the teacher made to the whole class and their parents, but barely. I thought this was boring, but would be worth sitting through because I would get to go on carnival rides afterwards. But my dad had to leave. He couldn't even stand up. I could not understand how my strong 6'4 father could be so selfish. If he could sit through the boring part, why not the good part? I, to this day, feel tremendously guilty over how I treated him and the tantrum I threw when my mom was struggling to hold my dad up and my dad was struggling just to stay conscious. Fortunately, the doctors were wrong. He made it well past the two weeks and eventually beat cancer five years later. It took years before I understood how seriously sick he really was. He had gotten down to 90 pounds, but to me, he was still a superman. We had this gym teacher in elementary school that would bring a bag of apples to class and give the girls one if they'd give him a massage. I was mad because I absolutely loved apples, still do. I thought it was unfair that only the girls got apples, so I told my teacher how Mr. So-and-so would only let the girls massage him for apples and we had to do sports. I was not an athletic child, so the idea of eating apples versus gym activities greatly appealed to me. I had to go to the principal's office to tell them my story, which was basically, this is bullcrap. Everyone should be getting apples or no one should be getting apples. Other students corroborated my story and soon enough, so-and-so was gone. TLDR, escaped, prevented, and ended potential inappropriate abuse from a teacher because I love apples. My dad was a fairly strict guy. Military background, very type A, etc. I was a very outdoorsy tomboy of a girl. As a kid, I loved to find caterpillars and build them little homes and find the best flowers for them to eat. And my dad loved this hobby of mine. So much so, he would encourage my caterpillar hunting, which I always thought seemed a little weird, but I didn't question it. There were a few plants out by our barbecue in the back that he specifically asked me to keep an eye on, because, as he told it to me, this was the best place to find them. My kid brain just thought my dad and I had found a common ground and that he wanted to help. About five years later, as my naivete started to wear off, I realized my dad was a total pothead. My brother, who was 10 years older than me, was chatting with me about my new realization one day, and that's when it was finally spelled out for me. Those plants that, according to my pops, were the best place to find my footed worm friends were actually just my dad's pot plants, and he enlisted my help to keep them bug-free. TLDR, my dad encouraged me to hunt caterpillars off his pot plants. I just thought he was trying to help me find the coolest bugs to play with. I'm a redhead, but neither of my parents or my brother is a redhead. So when we were out in public when I was young, a lot of people would ask where my red hair came from. One day, when I was probably six or so, my parents told me to start answering the question with, from the mailman, which I did constantly because people always seemed to react to it. It wasn't until I got to high school that it clicked that the mailman in this scenario had not delivered my red hair in an envelope, but that it had come from a much different package. When I was about 8, I was using my parents' bathroom and picked up a hand towel by the sink and a plastic member fell out. I already knew what a member was since my siblings and I had watched the hilarious Where Did I Come From sexual education video narrated by Howie Mandel. I thought this plastic member was hilarious, and when my little sister was taking a shower, I poked it in through the shower curtain and would poke her with it. She thought it was pretty funny too. Our mom was horrified to find us playing with it, and when we asked what it was for, she said it was for medical purposes and studying. We were never able to find it again. 
It wasn't until a few years ago when my sister and I were reminiscing about stupid things we did as children that I remembered this incident and told her, Oh my god, we played with mom's adult toy! TLDR, found my mom's adult toy and joked around with it. Sister and I didn't realize until about 15 years later what it was. When I was 6, we used to play a lot with Pokemon cards at school. One recess, I left my deck inside the classroom. When I came back, my Charizard was missing from it. Three days later, a friend from class came to me and told me he found my Charizard outside in a bush. It took me 10 years to realize he stole it from me and then got cold feet and gave it back. When I was 7 and my brother was 4, a man came up to the backyard where we were playing and asked if he wanted to see the puppy in his van. My brother said yes and he started to follow him. I grabbed my brother's arm and screamed very dramatically, No! Until my parents came out. The man waved at my parents and then drove away. I felt a little embarrassed for, quote, overreacting by screaming no like that. Looking back, there is no way he wasn't a creeper. I asked my mom just now if she remembered that and why she didn't report him to the police to let them know there was a potential kidnapper in the neighborhood. She said, because he didn't actually do anything. When I was younger, my house was messy, and my mom only ever cleaned on special occasions, and that was only certain rooms people were allowed in. I always thought this was completely normal. We had wine boxes holding up our couch and shoved right up our chimney, which was covered by a fire screen. Our kitchen smelled of mold and rotting food, the benches and floors were covered in the source of the smell and other unidentifiable objects. My clothes used to sit in a washing basket so long after they were washed that they would start to grow fuzz. There was one room beside mine which was so overpacked with rubbish and toys that I could barely crack the door open. It was just filthy overall. No one ever saw this though, and if they did, I can only imagine that my mom would have lost custody of me immediately and I think she knew that. I lived like that until I was 12, and I didn't really understand what was happening until recently when watching an episode of Hoarders. It's kinda messed me up. I can't sleep unless my house is spotless, and I constantly have panic attacks if I forget to clean something before leaving the house. In kindergarten, I had a best friend named Daniel, and we played with toy dinosaurs and traded them all the time. January comes around, and I invite him to my birthday party I was having at my house. He never showed up that day and my mom told me that day he wasn't going to be able to make it as well as he wouldn't be able to come to school again. Little kid me was like, okay, I'll see him later. He died in a car crash on the way to my birthday party. Edit, thank you for your support and kind words. To the people saying this didn't happen or other rude things, this did happen, and I feel sad every single birthday I have. To the people asking did I get his gift, I did not. But I still have the last glow-in-the-dark triceratops that he gave me. Really, how heartless do you have to be to just assume a story somebody wrote on the internet is made up, especially when it's about something as emotional as this? Like, I get it, you could easily lie about something for clout or internet points, but come on man, you can't just assume something like that. I hope I'm not late to the party. When I was about 6 or 7, I was looking for bugs in my backyard when I came across a super rare and cool praying mantis. Naturally, I scooped it up and put it in my bug container. Later on, I was looking for more bugs when I found yet another praying mantis. Lucky day. I was super excited and put it in the container with the other praying mantis. Both of them stood in there dead still and just kind of bobbed around like praying mantises do. I came back a few years later and was appalled by what I found. The bigger mantis standing there as still as ever right on top of a praying mantis head and legs. I was super spooked. Was that mantis a killer? Did the smaller mantis fall apart or explode? What happened? It really weirded me out for a while. I'd say about 10 or so years later, I found out that the female mantis eats the male after screwing. I still don't know if I'm an accomplice to a murderer or a world-class wingman. In my adolescence, telemarketers frequently called our house. My parents instructed my sister and myself to respond to questions like, is your mom or dad home? with, she or he's in the shower. Well, one summer day, when I was six, we got a telemarketer call. After I explained I was only a child and could subsequently not conduct business for the household, he asked, Is your mom home? I said, No, she's in the shower. What about your dad? He's in there too. It was not until years later that I realized his sudden embarrassed laughing was caused by me accidentally making this guy think my parents were getting it on in the shower while their poor innocent son was home. I lost one of my teeth when I was 7 years old, so I was excited to get money and stuff from the tooth fairy. I put the tooth under the pillow and I was ready to get my prize for losing a tooth. 
The next morning, I woke up and the tooth was gone, but no present. I went and told my dad about how I just got scanned from the tooth fairy and he was like, oh, the tooth fairy had to run fast, so she gave me the money to give to you. He then pulls out his wallet and gives me the two dollars that the tooth fairy gave him. I was so happy, but still wondered why the tooth fairy was in such a rush. My mom was really intent on having my younger brother believe in things like Santa and the tooth fairy for as long as possible. Once she forgot to replace his tooth with money. I asked her about it, and in her infinite wisdom she had me, I got home before everyone else, make a letter from the tooth fairy to explain why it was late. I said that two kids had gotten into a fight and knocked every single one of their teeth out, so she ran out of quarters and had to run home to get more. I was quite proud of the story, and he bought it. But he started having doubts, so he left a note with one of his teeth asking for proof that the tooth fairy was real. My mom wrote him a letter back and taped a small lock of black hair to it. All of my family has blonde hair except for my dad, but he keeps his very short. He bought a hook, line, and sinker, and didn't find out the tooth fairy wasn't real until well after he lost all of his teeth. Had that note on his wall for years. Turns out, the hair was from the single black spot on my grandma's dog that was living with us at the time. Pure genius. When I was six and my brother was four, we used to walk to our cousin's house which was two houses down. One evening, we asked our mother if we could go over and she said yes and lets us walk over by ourselves. While we're walking, this car drives up to us and asks if we knew where the nearest McDonald's was and if we'd like to come with him. I told him we weren't allowed to eat McDonald's without our mother's permission and turned to get her to ask if we were allowed. She was already running outside to get us when the car sped off. I was around 15 when I was reminiscing with my family and she brought it up. Creepy realization. When I would stay at my grandmother's house, I had a bunch of VHS tapes about dinosaurs and stuff that I wanted to watch. Sometimes I'd get to watch them, but only if my grandpa was home. Mima always said, you'll have to wait until Peapaw gets back, I can't work that VCR. She also had all her soaps recorded on tape, and many times I saw her record them without my grandpa being home. She feigned incompetence so that she didn't have to watch my dinosaur movies, and I never realized it until I was an adult. It is the wise woman who plays the fool. Mima, you sly fox. I never understood that not everyone had people drop bags of groceries on their steps, while the people just rang the bell and drove away. Dawned on me as an adult that we were poor. Then, I looked back at the old pics and noticed all the signs. Tiny Christmas tree in the background. Disappointed faces on Christmas pics. No vacation pictures. Dang it, I'm gonna try to avoid having my kids live that way. The other part of that is I didn't realize how stressed my mom always was until I got older and realized not everyone's parents freaked out weekly and slammed doors and peeled off in their car leaving their kids alone and scared. I specifically remember one incident where my mom, brother, and I went to the grocery store and while we were all walking to the car, my mom dropped a gallon of milk and it exploded all over the ground. My mom started crying and my brother said, don't cry over spilled milk, mom, kind of chuckling. I didn't understand at all. Now, looking back, it hurts me to think how hard my mom was trying to keep everything together. She passed away at age 51 when I was 18. She had a rough adulthood. I live my life now hoping to become what she wanted me to be. She made tons of mistakes, but she was there for me on her own and she tried so hard. All you teens, take notice of how your parents act when they think you're not looking. You might be surprised to find that they are very stressed and working super hard to make you happy, oftentimes with only frustration to show for it. I was cleaning chickens with my grandparents when I was a kid, probably about 10 years old. I was pulling out the insides and I found what I thought were two eggs that were growing inside the chicken. I got all excited and showed my grandma and told my mom about it when she picked me up. I noticed that they both had smirks that seemed odd when I told them about it. Years later, I thought back about that time and realized that it was a rooster and those were his nuts. Sounds like somebody found out why roosters go cock a doodle doo. I'm sorry. Okay, this one's a wild ride, so stick around. Carjacked with my cousin. I was 12, she was 16. Gun pointed at my head and everything. At the court hearing, they were caught, my lawyer person lady asked if I was aware that the four men who carjacked my cousin and I had intention to kidnap us, as the police found duct tape and rope in their getaway car and they fessed up to it. That was a heavy bomb dropped on me while I was testifying against them, but I never really understood how lucky I was until I was older. Since everyone asked why they changed their minds, I've heard that the leader of the group decided against it because we reminded him of his kid sisters. 
Since it was technically my uncle's car and happened in my uncle's driveway, they were the ones responsible for pressing charges against the men, who were pulled over for speeding down the freeway just as two detectives arrived to ask us questions. The car was totaled. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.